Tim. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm hey, how's it going? It is Tuesday, August 18th, and this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. Today we'll get some coronavirus updates, also South Korea's record monsoon season, and looking into this week's scripture, let's look at the book of Romans. So, once again, we start the podcast with how are you guys doing today? It must be awesome to be already into Tuesday going strong into this week. Really glad that you guys have joined us here on the Morning Star Drive. Keep liking and commenting, and I want to hear from you guys and see how you're doing. Now, remember, last Sunday edition, we met Taka from Japan. He's currently a missionary in Australia, and he's been doing an amazing job. Also, an artist that even did an album cover for the Sumni Boys. Super fun, insightful interview, and really some cool stories. So make sure to take a look at the Sunday edition this week. So, oh, just a couple, you know, I'm just really happy right now because uh, I, had, I had some, you know what, I'm going to share this at the very end. I'm going to change my program. No, I'm not going to change my program. But uh, yeah, I, I've had a really, I, it wasn't a stressful week last week. It wasn't stressful, but I had stress in my head for no apparent reason, but I had this great realization that helped me out. But either way, uh, I'll probably talk about that a little bit at the end. So let's get into the featured artist of the day. Today's featured artist is Paper Music Associates from Korea, and their artist is Bok, which is a hip-hop artist. I think it's Bok. It's spelled Bok, B-O-K. So it sounds like Bok, but I know in Korean also the word Bok means like blessing. So it's one of the two. You know, I got to ask them. This song is called Noa Hamke. Right, Noa Hamke, which means like with you. And you know, we've, we've heard this before kind of because we're like Juwa Hamke, like together with the Lord, right? So this is kind of like together with you. And that's going to be our featured artist and song for the day. Second song from Kumachang in Japan. That song is Who Will Comfort Me featuring Maki. And the third song is from Sung Beats in Canada. This Joy of Providence, and of course, from one of the people in our Sunday edition we interviewed, Steve Handy will be singing that one from the Lifetime album so let's guys let's guys just really support uh, all these artists we have from around the world and make sure that they get our support and prayers too Oh, 
너를 볼수 있단 사실에 오늘도 난 너를 보며 힘을 냈어 여러 가지를 했어 지금도 넌 잘하고 있지만 이것만은 절대 잊지마 혼자 같아도 난 너와 함께란 걸 처음엔 많이 어두웠지만 지금은 여기저기 빛이 보여 하나 둘씩 조금씩 밝아졌고 결국엔 그 빛처럼 찬란해져 어제보다 더 나아가길 바래 너와 내가 함께라는 걸 기억할래 꼭 하나뿐인 널 깨닫길 바래 세상 누구보다 같이 있는 걸 매일 그대에게 쓰는 letter 언제나 내 곁에 있다 오늘도 말해 어디에 있던 어디를 가던 지난 너의 옆에 있어 everyday 언제부터 내게 했던 노래 그 노래처럼 너무 특별해 넌 지금껏 나와 함께 했던 나처럼 영원토록 함께 해줄래 내가 바라본 꿈의 세계도 어느새 이루어졌네 아름답고 찬란한 곳에서 난 너와 함께 매일 그대에게 쓰는 letter 언제나 내 곁에 있다 오늘도 말해 어디에 있던 어디를 가던 지난 너의 옆에 있어 everyday 언제부터 내게 했던 노래 그 노래처럼 너무 특별해 너 지금껏 나와 함께 했던 날처럼 영원토록 함께 해줄래 난 너와 함께 
だろうかあの場所で一人きり誰の助けもない中顔も体もない大きな手がああ全世界を愛し尽くすために使わされたその方を大きな手で助けて Always act, and I will always love. 
And that is This Joy of Providence that comes from uh, Sung Beats in Canada. And that is from the Lifetime album. Uh, also, the two other songs we heard, the, the featured artist was Pok from Paper Music Associates in Korea, hip-hop artist over there. And that song was Noa Hamke, or With You, or Together With You. And the last, oh, the second song was also from Kumachang in Japan and Who Will Comfort Me. And that was featuring Maki. So I hope you guys really enjoyed those songs. Which brings us into coronavirus updates for the day. I don't know, that sounds terrible either way. Let's go into coronavirus updates of the day. It's 21.8 million cases in the world with 773,000 deaths at 3.54%. Some great, great news is every country we're going to talk about today, um, they're either the same or they've gone down. So no one has gone up. This is great. Okay, so look at the U.S. at 5.5 million cases, 173,000 deaths, 3.11% mortality rate. Brazil's at 3.3 million, 107,000 deaths, which means now, yep, Brazil's over 100,000 deaths, right? 3.23%. Uh, mortality rate. India, 2.6 million cases, 51,000 deaths at 1.93%. Peru, 535,000 cases, 26,000 deaths at 4.9%. Colombia, 468,000 cases, 15,000 deaths at 3.22%. And that is uh, a place that has really good coffee, Colombia. I love Colombian coffee. Either way, Mexico. Mexico, 517,000 cases, 56,000 deaths at 10.92%. And the Philippines, all the Filipinos and Philippines is out there listening to this podcast. Um, 161,000, is that bad news? 161,000 cases, 2,600 deaths at 1.65%. You guys remain the same. Sweden down to 6.86% and Belgium down to 12.69%. We look at uh, daily infection rates. India is still on top with 58,000 cases at 2%. US, like they dropped significantly at 36,000 cases at 1%. Brazil, 22,000 cases, 1%. These are really good signs because they're, they're both, these top three countries are going down. Uh, Colombia, 11,000 cases, 3%. Peru's at, uh, Mexico's at 6,300, no, Peru's at 9,500 cases at 2% and Mexico uh, rejoining the top six with 6,300 cases and 1% mortality rate. All right, so that brings us into the, the current news for the day. And we're going to talk about the flooding that had just recently stopped in Korea. This, this, it just stopped. And, and I think it's going to rain a bit more, though. Just stopped in Korea. It's like the worst, uh, worst flooding in 100 years. So almost 100 years, it hasn't been this bad. And this has been the longest monsoon season um, ever. Ever. You know what does that mean? Uh, the, the former record was 49 days of straight rain. They went 54 days of straight rain. This is the record since they've been uh, since they've been counting this. 54 straight days just ended on Sunday. Uh, they're gonna go. It ended on Sunday, but now there's a heat wave. Those of you who don't know that there was some swimming going on in the natural temple just the other day. Uh, I wish I was there. Uh, also, because of all this rain that was coming for 54 straight days, you're talking uh, landslides. 37 people died, uh, th over 8,000 people displaced, and also, uh, like, and I believe there's over 2,000 people still uh, not able to go back. Uh, over 9,000, what, 9,300 hectares of farmland swamped and buried, uh, like 20,000 buildings that were damaged. So we're talking, we, we haven't even gotten into the economic uh, price of this, this, um, this catastrophic, you know, monsoon season. Uh, the landslide warnings were at the highest level from the Na National Forest Agency. Uh, some local flights in the, just local flights, some of them were canceled during this time. And one of the worst hit areas was actually Seoul. 
Seoul is one of the worst hit areas. Like the rain obviously can't go all over Korea at the same time. Uh, I know that in Jeju Island, in Jeju Island, it went 49 straight days. And then it, it, it and then uh, Seoul was at 54 days, which is kind of crazy, right? So Seoul is one of the worst hit areas. Uh, they had to close down roads. And I was looking at some of the video and pictures. We're talking cars were basically like, the water's up to the windshield on the, on the cars. Yeah, it, it was that bad. Rush hour traffic replaced by rivers. Closed roads they just looked terrible. Troops were brought in for search and rescue. Uh, there was this one person they were, they were interviewing. I was watching the, the news for the Korean news. And this guy's like, it's like all of a sudden, uh, like it starts to rain. Ten minutes later, water comes into the stores. Five minutes later, it's up to their knees. 10 minutes later, it came up to their belly. And then they, he's like, we just got it. We had to go. We couldn't think about saving anything. We just wanted to save our lives. Uh, residents were warned the entire time, do not go into your basements. Do not go into valleys. Do not go into rivers because it's, it's really dangerous. Um, yeah, we have no idea what the financial hit's going to be. But at least they said just for like businesses that are going to claim insurance, it's going to be in the tens of millions. Uh, but if you look at the overall impact of this, um, this monsoon season and the flooding, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's going to be probably, you're probably looking in the hundreds of millions, right? Or maybe even billion is possible, right? We'll, we'll, we'll get to see what that is, right? Uh, the longest mon monsoon season, 54 days, the record was just made during this pandemic time. Uh, at one point, there's like 25 wards in Korea, and half of the 25 were at risk of flooding. Uh, and, you know, there, there was a lot of, you know, there, the floods were going on in North Korea also, too. And uh, major highways, bridges were partly closed. Uh, like the water levels was, was exceeding flood levels. It went to like 8.5 meters high. Uh, elementary schools turned into shelters for those that were displaced. Many areas had to evacuate. Um, and even though the 54 days straight is done, they still say there's more rain expected on the way. Over 50,000 civil workers and military went out to help the situation all over Korea. Um, there's like there's, there's a lot of dams in in. Uh, in uh, Seoul and in Korea, and uh, on Monday, lat not not this Monday, but one Monday ago, uh, they had to release like fifteen thousand tons of water. Not, we're not talking fifteen thousand liter, fifteen thousand tons, fifteen thousand tons. It means you have to times that by a thousand. Adding three zeros to that is like one point five million. Is that right? Three zeros to it. Oh, it's like fifteen million. Fifteen million. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Fifteen thousand tons of water. Right, which is the most that they've released in five years. Uh, everything started just every. All the rains actually started on July twenty third of the twenty fourth, and it was in Busan first. And it was raining and flooding. Cars were submerged, being swept away. Uh, pictures and videos are showing that streets were completely flooded. Apartments and streets. Uh, it just by looking at the videos and stuff. When you looked at what was happening at the beginning of the of the monsoon season, it was it looked like three to four feet of rain. Well, that 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 uh, the, the interview guy I told you about. He said it was up to his belly in ten minutes. They said it was like almost a record for the most amount of rain that came down. Something like 920 million. I forget what it was. It was something ridiculous, right? Uh, the worst hit was uh, Chunan and Daejeon. And of course, Seoul was one of the worst hit ones too. Uh, and they came after those two play uh, after the After Chunan and Daejeon, uh, they were hit first. Like Pusan was hit. They went to Chunan, Daejeon. And then it went all the way over to uh, Seoul, which was hit the worst out of the three. So... It's, it's quite interesting to see uh, all the different types of, like, I'm not sure how we would say it, what's the best way of saying this, right? But, we, you know, the way that um, the way that we know things are happening, it's like, yeah, it's basically God's judgment that is happening right now. And we just really have to be understanding, like, seeing how real it really is. It is real. Uh, and uh, this the reason I brought this one up first was because this was in the message on Sunday too. So I, I wanted to, to just make sure that everyone's updated of how bad the flooding was. When, when some team said, oh, we prepared two months in advance. Yeah, it was that bad. 54 days of rain in Seoul, 49 in Jeju. Everyone's being flooded up to their bellies and even more cars are being like swept away in some places too. So um, it, yeah, when, when Sunsi was talking about the rain coming down, yeah, it was really coming down, like crazy rain. All right, so that brings us into uh, the praise portion of the day. We're going to sing some praise today. The first song is going to be, I've come back, I've run, something really inspirational and, and uh, yeah, something inspiring for us to listen to first. Then we go into I Have Found My Love, which is one of the most epic songs that was ever made. I wish the guy's part was more than just the first like two sentences, but it's really, it's an epic song. And then the last one is going to be Oldie But A Goodie. It's going to be the song Whenever, Wherever.
Surely come back. I have run for heaven's will, and today for the will. I have run once again. God and the Spirit see me and we. At this history of love, they're filled with joy, they're thrilled, they are completely satisfied. Till the sun set, till the moon rose and the stars shone deep into the night. God in the Holy Spirit looked. Till the sun set, till the moon rose and the stars shone deep into the night.
times come, I must go to a far land I must leave now. Drifting o'er mountains and seas, I hear mere rumors of him. I have waited ages, it seems, yet I have seen nothing of him. I will seek him out.
is whenever wherever wow you know what uh, when you when you really think about it if you really focus on the lyrics it's true that uh, like these songs are basically sermons right these are songs taken from the message and it really makes you think deeply 
it really like that last song just hit me like wow like this is like the lord preaching to me right the lord has to be in your mind wherever wherever whenever wherever you go and i really it's it's really amazing though that uh it wow yeah it really you got ah, you know i don't know what the right way to put it is but you listen to these songs and you can sing it in your mind uh, but if you're not really thinking or focusing, it doesn't become a sermon. It's just like a song or melody you like. But if you really focus on the words, it's really, really deep. Uh, I hope you guys uh, also, as you praise, you know, let's, let's praise with a, a focused mind so we know that the Lord is talking to us through these songs. So let's get into the word study of today. And today we're going to go into the book of Romans. Romans, 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 right? So we know that uh, close to like 13 to 15 of the letters, most likely 13 of them were written by Paul. These are all letters of Paul to churches in different regions. And of course, Romans means to the people in Rome. Now, uh, let's get into the book of Romans. So Paul's one that wrote this letter and he wrote the letter to the Romans uh, and he's writing it while he's in the city of Corinth. Okay, so he's in the city of Corinth writing to the people uh, in Rome. And this is during his third missionary journey that he wrote this letter. And at the time he was gathering an offering from the Gentile Christians for the church in Jerusalem. Okay, and this would place the letter's composition date. This would probably around somewhere like 56 AD. So around 20 years after Jesus died, around that time, 20, more, more than 20, right? About, no, no, less than 20, about 16 years after, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Almost 30 years, like 26 years after, okay? So this was written to the Christians living in Rome. And at that time, of course, it's the Roman Empire. So it was the epicenter. It was the center of the empire and it was very, very ethnically diverse, very, right? So in the first century AD, right, it, it had a population, get this guys, around a million people in an area of less than 10 square miles. That's really small, guys. A million people less than 10 square miles. And in this lar of this large population, it was estimated that around close to 50,000 Jews were living in that city of the 1 million. And... Um, uh, the Jewish population dates back to the second century BC because of the diaspora. Okay, the diaspora was a time. Uh, for those of you who didn't uh, don't know, there's a Bible talk that I have. Uh, it's called Bible Time. I have this only one video, and I should make more of these. But it's about the history from after Solomon to the time of the Babylon captivity, and that's the time when after Solomon there was the United Kingdom split into the north and the south, and what happened was uh, the north. It only it lasted like 201 years, and ap and the reason why it split up was because of the diaspora, and that's when the Jewish pop the Jews in the northern northern Israel they all split and they 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 scattered everywhere, right? So uh, those of you who don't know, in 64 A.D. there was a huge fire in Rome that led Nero to expulse all the Jews from uh, from Rome. So there was a time when they were expelled from Rome, but not at this time here. It's about less than 10 years later. Okay, so this also resulted in the first major persecution of the Christian church the, uh, from that one fire there. So it's unclear how, um, no one is really sure how the church in Rome actually began, but the best explanation is like all roads lead to Rome. So even though Christianity was happening in other regions, the people would always eventually come back to Rome and they started a church in one of the synagogues. Uh, yeah, so there's no real, no one knows the real history of how the Roman church started, but you, you have to understand that it was before Paul arrived. Paul wasn't the one that started the church in Rome. It was already there uh, before Paul arrived. So uh, many pe people may have heard that the gospel in Asia, Greece, or elsewhere could have traveled to Rome. That's possible. It's very, very possible because Rome was the center of the world at that time. So it could have been many people coming to evangelize and start a church over there. That would be great to find out how that happened. And... Of course, the city of Rome is, well, if you only have 50,000 Jews, it's predominantly populated by Gentiles, and it's expected that the church was comprised of both Jewish and Gentiles, right? And if you look in the book of Rome, uh, Romans, Paul does address both groups in, uh, in, the, in the book of Romans, right? Uh, Paul, as, as we know, he's authored about 13, of, 13 to 15, well, I think 13, right? 13 is to be fair. 13 New Testament epistles, and he was, he is an Israelite, but he's born in Tarsus. That's why his original name was Saul, Saul of Tarsus. And his name got changed eventually by Jesus, right? And he studied under Gamaliel in Jerusalem, and he was a Pharisee, right? He became a Pharisee. And he was, he was there during the stoning of Stephen, and he approved of it. And he became someone who persecuted the church. 
And of course, if you guys know the story of Paul, he converted to Christianity uh, on the way to Damascus. He was blinded by the light, and Jesus said, "Why are you persecuting me?" And then we know, you know, there's a whole story that goes into that. So uh, the the interesting part of the Book of Romans that we can look at is. The, the way you look at the Book of Romans is interesting because it's the systematic laying out of the gospel and the doctrines and how it applies to our lives, our daily lives, right? So if there's one book you want to, to read to grasp the doctrine of the gospel of Christ and how it applied into our life, it is the Book of Romans. And this is a book that I, I really feel that everyone should read anyway. It's a very deep book. Um, at the time, the problem that was happening in Rome, uh, well, the problem is the wrath of God was pouring out because we are sinners. Like that's the problem that's li it's being laid out in the book of Romans. Uh, the wrath that God pours out because we're sinners. And then Paul talks about why we are sinners and how we are powerless to change our own condition. Like we can't do it on our own. And we have the inability to keep the law of God. And of course the answer he presents is, it is Christ that has an is the answer for our sins. He bore the sins. Uh, he bore sin for us to be saved. So those who are in Christ are justified and when you get closer and closer to the end of the book of Romans, it talks about relating faith. Like uh, through faith, we are related to Christ and you have to put all your faith in Christ and we get to learn how to put faith into our daily life, right? So that is the book of Romans. I hope that kind of uh, helps you out uh, with understanding Romans a bit more, a, a bit better, right? So this is the book of Romans. I hope you guys, uh, it, it's something that you enjoy. Uh, just comment below if there's something else you'd like to hear besides like these Bible things. I know someone else uh, commented that they want to hear uh, the Vietnam stories from something Vietnam book because it's not in English very much. I don't have the books in English. Well, no one does. I don't even have the Korean ones because I travel so much I can't carry these heavy books around. But I will look for some of the some of the the summarized documentations of it, and you guys tell me what you guys think about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe start a segment on that too. All right, cool. All right, so that finishes the, the word study of the day. That brings us to the song of choice. Today's song of choice is uh, cool. It is a request from Indonesia. So Jim in Indonesia has requested this song. It's called uh, The Future Is Now. And if you just look at the title itself, it's inspired by this week's message that the hope is not just about the future, but the present is the past future, that you have to think about what's happening right now too. This song is sung by an Australian singer named Marlo who's been singing since she was nine years old. I think she sang in the school choir. Uh, great song. I just listened to it. And Jim, thank you for requesting this. Let's listen to this song from Marlo in Australia. Uh, it is a song. The song is called The Future Is Now. So now you're here again knocking at my door. A little too late for I'm sorry for the lights went out cause you kept cutting the cord And I started to fade into your grave See I finally opened up my eyes And I saw me coming back to life That I'd be better without you inside It's time to be someone I wanna recognize Starting to break out from your grave. See, I finally opened up my eyes.
Cause the future, the future is now Not back in doubt Cause the future is now And that is The Future Is Now, and that comes from Marlo all the way over there from Australia. I hope you guys enjoyed that song. Thank you so much, Jim, over there in Indonesia, who recommended, uh, who requested this song, uh, especially coming from this week's message about the future. Yeah, the future is right now, right? So uh, that's going to bring us into um, a story section, okay? Now, we already started, we, Ruth was yesterday, and uh, she wasn't a judge herself, but she was someone who was at the time of the judges. But um, that means we're going into the story of Sam, and Samuel's got a, you know, Samuel's got a very lengthy story, okay? So since he's got a lengthy story, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of split this up, uh, this story of Samuel up into a couple, like maybe two sections. Maybe I'll do, I'll finish off Samuel either tomorrow or the week after, or the day after that, okay? So we're going to get into the story of Samuel, okay? So we know that there was a great exodus from Egypt that Moses brought the people out of the land and eventually through Joshua, they went into the promised land and they began to defeat the tribes of Canaan. Then the judges came and of course, the judges were about keeping the land and stopping uh, the outside forces from coming in to take back the land. And it was, it's basically about the rise and fall of Israel over and over. As we heard, like, they were taken for like 20 years uh, from the Midianites and then the Philistines came in and they always had these judges that came, came to save Israel. And it's always because the Israelites kept turning away from God and then these people came in to take back the land. So Samuel was one of the key leaders and prophets of Israel and they consider him the first prophet and maybe even the last judge. His mother was Hannah, and at that time, she was barren. She was loved by her husband more than any of his wives, and there was two wives at that time, and Hannah was the loved one. But she just couldn't have children. And because she couldn't have children, and because she was loved even more by her husband, the other wife, with many children, always provoked her, even to the point she couldn't eat, and she just wept. And one day, she went to the temple while the priest, Eli, was at the door. And she prayed so deeply to God for a child that the priest, Eli, actually thought she was drunk. But she told him, no, it's, I have this grief, I can't have any children. Eli blesses her, she gets pregnant, and she gives birth to a son and names him Samuel. And she was so happy that God answered her prayer that she gave Samuel to God, dedicated him to live for God. So like I said, Eli was the priest at that time and he was the one that began to raise Samuel. Eli's sons, on the other hand, they were wicked in the eyes of God. They didn't follow the laws, and they even slept with the woman who served at the entrance. One day, there was another man of God who came to Eli and told him that God said that his lineage will be cut short and the children will die. Later, 
just to let you guys know what's happening to Hannah, Hannah dedicated Samuel to God, and God allowed her to have three more boys and two daughters. One day, when Samuel, it was at night in the evening when Samuel was in the temple, he heard someone call his name. And since only Eli was there, Samuel goes to Eli and says, you called? And Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Once again, he hears the voice. He gets up and goes to Eli. Did you call? And he says, no. It happens the same the third time. But at this time, Eli realizes it is God calling him. And he tells Samuel, the next time you hear the voice, say this, speak, Lord for your servant is listening. God calls Samuel and he responds, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And he told Samuel that two things were going to happen. The first was that God will do something in Israel that will make the ears of the Israelites tingle. I'm not sure what that is, what that means. And then the second one, was the prophecy about Eli and his family will come true. So a time later, there was a war between the Philistines and Israel. And Israel went out to fight and they were being defeated by the Philistines. And they killed about 4,000 Israelites. Everyone returned back to camp and they thought, you know what? If we bring the Ark of God then we will win. So Eli's two sons brought the ark into the camp. The cheers and the cries of joy were so loud, the enemies, the Philistines, began to be afraid. But they said, let's still fight. And yet, and still, the Philistines defeated the Israelites. And they say on that day, they lost about 30,000 soldiers. But not only did they lose soldiers, but both of Eli's children were killed. And on top of it, they captured the Ark of God. When Eli heard the news, it was not so much his children dying, but it was the fact that the Ark of God had been captured. He fell over backwards and died. When the Philistines captured the ark, they put it into the temple of Dagon. The next morning, the statue of Dagon fell face first on the ground before the ark of the Lord. Second day, same thing happens, but the head and hands broke off and only the body lay there. All of a sudden, people started getting tumors. So they moved the ark to another town, and then the people there started getting tumors. They tried to move it again a third time, but this time the townspeople were like, no, it's not staying here. So they gave the ark of God back to Israel. And of course, from this point on, comes in Samuel. And that's when we're going to start discussing about Samuel a little bit more tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we'll talk about Samuel. All right. Hope you guys enjoy these Bible talks, uh, learning about some of these stories a little bit more. Not, they're not much deeper, but at least we get the gist of the stories. I know that a lot of us uh, may not have time or we want to read the Bible more, but I hope that you guys can listen to some of these and also learn a little bit more about the Bible too. It's not going to be as deep, but it's going to be something that I hope that uh, you guys will take something from. All right. So that brings us, you know, I was going to talk about this realization I had on the weekend, but I could talk about this on Wednesday. Yeah. So tomorrow uh, or maybe Thursday. So uh, tomorrow we'll also listen to, on Wednesday, we're going to listen to the second part of Samuel, and then we'll get into uh, the next part, which is I'll share with my realization I have last week. All right. So I hope you guys are having, you guys are going to have an amazing uh, Tuesday. And we'll be able to see each other again. Yes, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. Have a wonderful and amazing day. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. It's the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. You saw me up with Sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's re -act.
alive, just listen if you're your mind. I'm burning with desire and the 